If you imagine you're sitting watching the TV, there are proteins in your eyes that allow you to take in the light from the TV, different proteins in your brain cells that allow you to process that information. At some point, you're gonna get up and walk using different sets of proteins to the refrigerator to grab the food to satisfy your appetite. So everything you do in everyday life revolves around proteins. Hi, I'm Steve Almo, and I want to tell you about what we do in our laboratory, which is to study proteins. And in particular, we're interested in the shapes of proteins, because knowing the shape of a protein provides a huge blueprint as to its function. Once you know the function of the protein, you understand how it operates under normal conditions, that is, during normal healthy physiology, but it also gives you the opportunity to modify the activity of these proteins for therapeutic uses. Imagine you walk into a drugstore. You're surrounded by prescription and non-prescription therapeutics. Almost without exception, every one of those drugs is directed against a protein in your body. These proteins are now able to be either stimulated or inhibited in terms of their normal function, and you have now treatments to treat a wide range of diseases, including infectious disease, autoimmune disease, as well as malignancy. So that's what motivates us to really focus on protein structure or protein shape as our major tool for advancing biology and therapeutics. So now we're in our protein production facility where we make many of the proteins involved in the human immune response. That requires us to put our entire protein production infrastructure inside a sterile biocontainment facility. So we take purified proteins and turn them into crystals, much like the salt and sugar crystals you might have at your dining room table. Once we've grown the crystals, we're able to image them, as Raphael's demonstrating, in very high detail. And here's one such example, which shows a crystal with very beautiful, clear faces and very sharp edges. The power of crystals is not in the beauty of the crystal themselves, but when you put them into an X-ray beam. If you put a crystal into a beam of X-rays, the crystal is hit and diffracts or bends these X-rays, and you get this beautiful diffraction pattern. From that diffraction pattern, Rajesh can determine the structure of that molecule. If you zoom in, you can see in yellow the carbon atoms, in red, oxygen, and in blue, the nitrogen atoms, giving you exquisite detail about the position of every specific atom in this protein. If you now zoom out, you basically get the overall shape of this molecule. So what I'd like to do is give you one really powerful example of what we can do once we understand the shape or structure of a protein. I'm going to take this example from your immune system. Just to give you a cartoon picture of how the immune system works, I'm going to show you a T cell. And the T cell has a large number of proteins that are on the cell surface. And these are really the sensors or gatekeepers of function. There's one particular protein on the cell surface that is actually the ignition. That protein recognizes infected and malignant cells and turns on the T cell. Just like a car, you don't go anywhere until you step on the accelerator. There's another set of proteins, the so-called accelerators, that enhance or stimulate the T cell function so the T cell can actually kill the malignant cell that it's recognized. At some point, you want to turn off the immune response. And in that case, there are yet another set of proteins on the T cell surface, the brakes. These brakes will now work in opposition to the accelerator and bring the whole system back to homeostasis. One of the most exciting projects in our lab focuses on a protein on the surface of a T cell that represents one of the major breaks. Based on our structures, on our shapes, we've been able to develop a range of variants or mutants of this protein that have much higher affinity for their target than the naturally occurring protein. This puts us in the position of being able to specifically turn off the break so we get this global boost in immunity. And this is now something we're using in preclinical mouse models to actually look for new treatments for malignant melanoma and metastatic carcinoma. Really, for someone who started off as a basic scientist, to be able to get our basic knowledge pointed in the direction of a real clinical application is really something I'd never envisioned. And that's what really excites me now.